everyone come on in because we are here today doing a ready to love make the move a day breakdown this is a day breakdown this is where i take these exclusive clips they they drop on the own tv youtube network they short clips about two minutes long and we break them down we break them down to the ground and we talk about them so today we're going to break down the video between jabari the conversation between jabari and vernicia because i thought it was an interesting conversation because it's about men and money and does money matter and we often talk about this but this was one video where i thought they got a little bit deeper in the conversation which i think is always needed even though they just dating but still it's good that they talking about it they're not even dating yet they ain't even chosen each other to date but they already talking about it okay we'll roll with it so let's watch it together. I'm going to be stopping it. If you want to watch it in its entirety without it being stopped and you getting annoyed at me for stopping it, like some people be writing in my chat, then go on over to YouTube and watch it in its entirety because I'm going to be stopping the video. So let's do it. I dated, I dated some women. I dated a lot of women who made more money than me. Mm -hmm. um... So I'm going to stop it right there. So Jabari admits he says he's dated women, a lot of women, who've made more money than him. He, first he said, oh, I dated some women. And he said, let me be honest. Let me be honest. <laughs> let me tell it for real. I dated a lot of women that have made more money than men. Honestly, that, I think that might be the first time I've heard a man admit that on one of these reality TV shows. We often know some of these men are making less money than these women, but they won't admit it. This is the first time I've heard a man say, you know what? I have dated a lot of women who've made a lot more money than me. Um, and so the question comes to be, are the women making more money than Jabari because Jabari doesn't make a lot of money or he just makes a modest salary? Does Jabari date up? Okay, is Jabari dating women who make more than him? So is Jabari interested in women who present a certain kind of way because they have a lot of money, they have a lot of money to, to do things for themselves and that's what Jabari is interested in, but Jabari really doesn't. Uh, can't afford those women the way the women want to be able to afford them. But I want to say that this is the first time that I've heard men on these reality shows admit this. Even last uh, year, uh, last season, and Ready to Love with Phil and Aries, he didn't want to admit it. He kept saying, I make money, I make money. But the truth is, we knew he made less money than Aries, but he never really got to the meat of the story. And the question may be, well, a man who makes less, should he date... Should a man uh, date a woman who makes more money than him or should he be going over here in my fair lane a woman? Should he be dating a woman who makes less than him so that he can raise her standard of living versus dating a woman who makes more than him and the woman feeling as if maybe she's raising his standard of living? I don't know. These are some questions. I don't know out there would you guys date a man who made less than you? Because I'm going to tell you, it's getting harder and harder and harder out here for women, period, not only just black women, a lot of women, to have a standard that I want the man to make not only more than them, they want the man to also make sometimes twice as much as them because a lot of women, what I hear them saying is, they don't just want you to make the same as them, they want you to make more because what they wanna be able to do is unload uh, some of their, whatever their bills are now, they wanna be able to have that taken care of by the man, which means that man can't even be the equivalent of the woman. So when Jabari says that he makes more than the woman he's dated, the question also will be, well, even if you made the same as the woman in today's world, do those women want Jabari? Are women out here only looking for men that make substantially more than them? Are any women looking for men who make the same as them? I don't know a lot of women probably say, I don't want a man who makes less than me, but are there still women looking for men who make the same as them? Because if we're going to go with this premise that the man needs to be able to afford himself and then also afford a lot of whatever the woman's life is, that means he needs to make substantially more than her to continue his lifestyle and then raise her lifestyle above that. There's a bigger dilemma out here in today's world than there was a world when I was growing up and dating and younger because the things that women do for themselves, honestly, we didn't, I didn't do those things back when I was in my twenties. Women now get their hundred dollar nails. They're getting hair done every week, every other week. Um, 
Women spend a lot more on themselves now in today's world, 2023, than women did spend on themselves back when I was younger in the 90s, the 80s or whatever. Um, it's a lot more expensive to care for a woman now than it used to be. So I think women need to consider that as well, knowing, and I did a video on this before talking about how much do you cost? Women need to add up how much do they cost? How much are those weaves or those lace fronts costing? How much are those fancy nails costing? Are you getting massages? Are you getting facials? What are you doing for your upkeep of yourself when you're saying, hey, I need a man to come in and help me take care of some of these personal items that I do? But I don't know. I'm talking about a whole lot of stuff. But these conversations really, really need to be talked about. So let's keep going. And some kind of way, ultimately, it became a problem. Um, so, what, kinda, what, so what was the problem? What, I ain't making enough money. To do what? <laughs> what did they need you to Every, do that you wasn't able that to do? Everything they wanted to do. So it would be, they would have these serious positions or, mm -hmm. you know, top tier positions. But at this time, I wasn't where I needed to be. And mm -hmm. so I came really... Okay, so what he said is women had top tier positions. The things they like to do, they probably like to go to Beyonce and get nice seats at Beyonce concerts. They might be going to charity balls where the, the ball the tickets to the ball are $250 a ticket. They don't want to go themselves. Do you want to go with me to this ball? Therefore, you should be buying the ball tickets. $250 each, that's $500. Plus, you need to buy a tuxedo, black tie. Um, they want to go on trips. They want bags. They want this. I think women have to really start to think about how much do they really, really, really cost. Add up your bills because that's what you really need to start talking to men about. If this is your thing, if this if this is your thing where you want men to not be equal with you on earning, you don't want the equal, you don't want 50-50, you don't want that, you want him carrying more, then you might need to know how much additional he's going to have to take on. If you 50-50, he's going to need to take on an extra $1,500 or $2,000 bill a month to pay for stuff you are already paying for. And what Jabari is saying is, he liked these women who were fancy, high class, got it going on, but he couldn't hang with them. He couldn't hang with them. And then these women are saying, well, it pay, you know, it's a price to hang around me. It's a price to date me. And what uh, Jabari was doing was he was trying to pay for things that his checkbook couldn't cash. <laughs> he was trying to pay for things his checkbook couldn't cash. So maybe one of the things that Jabari needs to do is Jabari, maybe he does need to date women who are more on his level, whereby those women would feel as if they are coming up by dating a Jabari. I don't know. Let's talk about it. Let's keep going. Um, perceptive about that money matters. It really, really, really matters. Money matters. How much you make, you know, um, how much you make. So, you know, sometimes you have a cap. And I know that other times when you're an entrepreneur, you don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there because Jabari, that's not true. Entrepreneurs have caps too. And let me tell you, there's a whole lot of entrepreneurs out here capping in these streets these days. And people who have nine to fives, you might need to start checking them on it. Because a lot of entrepreneurs who own their own business, they walk around flipping their hair, talking about I own my own business. I know Vernicia here is a hair salon owner. Let me tell you, the hair salon business is a tough business. Don't let me get in Vernicia's books. Don't let me start digging in Vernicia's book. Because hair salon people are struggling, okay, let's be honest, because things are high as heck out here and women don't have all the money anymore to be going to get their hair done like they used to and they don't have enough money to be paying the type of uh, bills that you have to go to hair salon. A lot of women are doing more things at home. A lot of women are doing things like me, getting crochet, okay, wear a shoe, braids. If I, want, if I want to get real braids, you know how much they want to charge you for real braids? No, that's okay. I'll go to Amazon. I'll pay my $50 for some crochet braids. And then I'm going to pay for an hour and a half of your services. I'm going to wash my hair at home. I'm going to blow dry my hair at home. Okay, I'm going to grease my scalp at home. All I'm going to do is come to you to braid it up and put in my crochet braids. Because I'm not paying for $100. I'm not paying for $100 for an hour and a half or, or two hours worth of work. I'm not even going to be paying no $300. Some of these people putting in crochets, braids out here, trying to charge people $250 for an hour and a half worth of work. An hour and a half worth of work, $250. You trying to make all your money off me? And that's because Harris Salonis is a tough business these days. It is. It's a tough business. That's why there's so many more products now for women to do things at home. 
flat irons, nicer blow dryers, all sorts of things. Women better invest in them because can't nobody afford to be going and getting their hair done at these hair salon prices. And as a result, businesses like Vernicia are hurting. I don't care what Vernicia says to, uh, to Jabari on here that she got unlimited income, unlimited earning potential. I don't believe it. Because for Renisha to earn money, unless she got a whole lot of hair stylists working for her and she making money off other people, then all her money comes when she's working. She ain't got no money where you sitting at home and the money's just coming in. She ain't, get, she ain't got no paid vacation like Jabari does at his job. She ain't got no 401k, no, no employer contributing to her 401k. She ain't got no paid health care by her company. So I don't want to hear no more about nine to five people hanging your head low, talking about, well, your money is unlimited because you're an entrepreneur, but my money is limited because I work nine to five. No, their money is limited too, Jabari. Vernicia's money is limited too. And before you start to believe you make a whole lot less than Vernicia, maybe you might want to ask her how much she makes. Don't assume it. Don't assume that just because someone's an entrepreneur, they're making more money than a nine to five person. It ain't true. It ain't true, especially not in today's world, because being an entrepreneur is very, very costly now because of the cost of labor and the cost of goods. And that has cut into the profit margins of a lot of entrepreneurs. It really has. And maybe a lot of men out here talking about it, but it's the truth. It is the truth. Let's keep going. So, you know, I occupy my, you know, I stay in my lane because... I've been told by some of my friends, Jabari, you got to stop dating out your lead. That's why your relationship's not mm. working. You dating these girls up here, and you not up here. So, but what was well, that's good. I'm glad that Jabari got some good advice from some of his friends and telling him you dating outside your lane. They always trying to tell women they trying to shoot for men outside of their lane. I'm glad to hear that some of Jabari's friends told him, listen, you trying to please women you can't please. You trying to write checks you can't cash. You might need to get a woman who appreciates where you are, appreciates what you got, appreciates that you might can raise her standard of living. Instead, you running over here to the women who are high class, who are rolling, and you trying to be a part of that club. And the truth of the matter is you can't hang in that club. I like the advice that Jabari's friends gave to him. Excellent. It's actually the same type of advice that people always want to give women when women start talking about what kind of man they want. I want a man that makes this much money and all this other kind of stuff. Everybody doesn't pair up well with everyone. I don't know why there is people get their feelings hurt over the notion that you're not for everybody. You're not for everybody, but you don't need everybody to want you. You don't need everybody to need you. You don't need everybody to be attracted to you. All you need is one person. One person, unless you're trying to be uh, in multiple relationships at one, you don't need a lot of people. You need to make it with one person. You need to get along with one person. You need to fit with just one person. Don't get mad over the people who say you are not in my league. Don't worry about it. It's plenty of people who would love to be with you. Concentrate on that. So I'm all for Jabari's friends telling him you dating in the wrong circles. You dating for women. You trying to get women who don't want you date women who would find you attractive and find you as a good catch. And I say the same thing to women. I say the same thing to women. The requirements, whether they require material things. Trip rules a bunch of material stuff. Trips, bags, hairs, nails. <laughs> you, you, know the, you know the role. You know the, you know. <laughs> okay, so there you go. He's saying when he couldn't afford the women, they wanted trips and bags and nails and hair. I ain't no man, but I'm gonna tell you right now, if I was dating, and I was going to contribute some money to a woman's lifestyle. I first have to see, uh, let me see how you spend your money. Maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm weird. Because maybe what I would want to do as the man is say, you know what? I'm going to contribute to our savings account. That's what I'm, if you want to use your money to pay for all your hair and your nails and your makeup, use your money to do that. If I'm going to be the man, I'm going to make sure that we have a foundation, a stability. I'm going to be contributing to this 401k. I'm going to be putting money in this savings account. Sure, I'm going to contribute. Sure, I'm going to step up. Sure, I'm going to do my part. But I wouldn't necessarily be contributing no money to people who are running around spending frivolously money they don't have. you got a lot of people out here living way above their means. They're perpetrating like they high class 
because they look good on the outside. But on the inside, their finances is jacked up. Listen, I've been a landlord. I see people's finances. I see women who look good, who got the latest Chanel bag, the latest uh, Gucci bag, the latest whatever, um, Yves Saint Laurent bag, red bottoms on, okay? Uh, hair fly, the best weave hair money could buy, okay? And then... When they get ready to apply for an apartment and they got to show their savings account or these type of things, you say, what? You don't even have two months savings in your account? You don't have two months savings in your account, but you ro rolling around in a leased rent Land Rover, Mercedes, all these fancy cars. You got a, you looking good on the outside. You present well. You even got a nice job. You got a nice salary, but you don't have no savings. But then these same women, is what Joe Barry is telling me, these same women want men to come around and start paying all these bills for you? No. Tell them you put some money in a savings account for them. Tell them I'll open up a city bond in your name. <laughs> Tell them I'll open up a treasury bond in your name. And I, that's how I'm going to contribute to you. But this idea of contributing to women who are living outside of their means, men shouldn't do it. I don't co-sign on it. I don't call sign on it one bit because why should you continue to help enable people who are spending money that, that they don't have? Why do you continue to spend money that you don't have? Now, I don't agree with it. Some people are overspending and undersaving and they spend the money that they don't have. And then what they want is they want somebody else to come along and foot those bills for you. No, pay for your own hair, your own nails. All that stuff, pay for it yourself and let the man take care of foundational things for your home that keeps rules over your health, that keeps your family intact. Every once in a while, he can buy you a nice outfit, of course. He can buy you a nice outfit. But this idea that women should expect men who they're dating to be paying for hair and nails and all this other kind of stuff, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Let's keep listening. Go, go, go on, boom, do everything you want. <laughs> so, well, I do it for myself. Right, okay. So the thing is, uh, I like nice things, mm -hmm. you know, but I am... Well, I'm not I like nice like things. A, it's a, a, like a neutral space for me. Like, okay. I'm not... Uh, like materialistic, right. but I like nice things. I mm. do own nice things. I have had men buy me nice things mm. in the past. They say I carry myself. They wanted to do those things. Mm. I didn't ask. I'm not gonna ask you to do nothing okay. for me. I feel like as a man, you should see it. If, especially if it's a if it's a want. I mean, not a want, a need, mm -hmm. and you just supposed to do it. Okay. Um, I like my birthday or something. I wouldn't expect you to buy me something. Okay, Vernicia, I'm with you. That men can buy you a nice presents. Men can take you out on nice dates. Um, but, uh, we might, if I was dating you, if I was a man, I was dating you, we'd have to come across what's a need versus a want, because there's a lot of things that some people would say their needs and other people would say that their wants, they're, they're optional. Some people say, no, they're a requirement. And some people say that they're, they're optional. And Bernicia said that she likes nice things. So I understand that you like nice things. So now my question is, I still have the same question. I'm wondering what does Vernicia want a Jabari or that man to come into her life and add to her life? What exactly is she looking for? She says right now she provides for herself. She cares for herself. She does all these things. Now she's saying, well, if I have a man and he sees that I like these things and I do these things, I will want him to want to volunteer and step up and do some of those things for me too. I agree. I agree, Vernicia, that your man should be able to step in. Now, is that the same thing as I'm going to take over all your nail, nail, I mean, nails, hair, lashes, whatever for the whole, the whole, uh, your whole month? Then what about the kids of the house? What about the household bills? Some women's upkeep just for these little extra things can add up sometimes to a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred a month, all by itself. We ain't even talked about savings. We haven't even talked about a mortgage, interest, uh, a mortgage, or taxes, or insurance, or for the plumber to come over and do a little plumbing job or something, or the gardener, or the pool man, or anything like that. We just covering what your hair, your nails. Vernicia need to get specific. 
nice that you know that I want. Like, I'm not a person. You ain't got to, I don't have to have the latest bag at mm -hmm. the season. They don't know me in Nordstrom and Saks by name. Mm -hmm. It's not that situation. Yes, they do. yes, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they honestly don't because my money went to my household and my kids. Yeah. I don't always have to put my money back into okay. this house with these kids. And yeah, they got... See, I, this is, I think Vernisha is giving the wrong impression. I, when I'm more here, Vernisha, I, I think Vernisha is just uh, more average. She's not trying to, like she said, I'm not trying to have the latest bag. I'm not trying to have all this. But when she made that opening statement, I need a man that makes a lot of money. When she makes the statement, it makes you wonder, well, what's a lot of money to you? And what Vernisha's actually saying is all her money kind of now is going to her house and her kids. That's what she's saying. She's saying that right now, most of her money goes to herself and taking care of her house, which she probably owns a house, and her kids, which I get it. Which you got to assume that's the same thing going on with a man. When you meet a man, just assume all his money is going the same place yours is, your house and your kids, which means his is going to his house and his kids. Now we're asking in a relationship, well, I know all your money right now is going to your house and your kids. But I'm going to need some of that money to come over here towards me because Vernice is saying that the most of her money is going to her house and her kids and then she's spending on herself. I ain't got it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm I saying? Feel, I know exactly what you're saying. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, it's not that situation. But I would expect, like, just my lifestyle not to have to change. change right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and so she says at the end, she don't want her lifestyle to have to change. So is she saying, I don't want my lifestyle to have to change? What? What, how does your lifestyle change if you get a man that makes the same money as you? How does your lifestyle change? If he can afford, if she said, well, because now when I want to go to Beyonce concert, I pay for it myself. But if I'm with you, I'm going to need you to pay for it. And so if you pay for it, you're going to buy both our tickets. So instead of them tickets being $500 just for me when I go with my girlfriends, and this is what I do, if I get with you, I need for you to pay me and you, which now is $1,000. Now, if you can't afford the $1,000, what that does to me is now my lifestyle has changed. I think that's what Vernicia is saying. Because if you're with a man and he makes the same amount as you, and then why would your lifestyle change? He's not taking money from you. He's not making you pay, pay for him. But what she's saying is if you can't afford to do the things I like to do, plus pay for me when we do those things, she's saying I will get cut off from those things. Because what she's saying is, I'm not going to pay 50-50 and I'm not going to pay for you. Which means now what? I can't go? So if I, if I go on trips and you can't afford to go on the trips that I like, and now you can't afford to take me on the trips that I like, that would mean that we can't go on no trips together because one is I'm not going to pay 50-50 and I'm not going to pay for you, which means now what? I can't travel. And that's saying, no, now my life has declined. So therefore, I don't want to date you. I think that's what Vernicia is saying. That's what I think Vernicia is talking about. I think women got to think out this financial thing that they're asking of men. I think men have to think about it too. Just like Jabari is saying, maybe I need to choose different women to date. I think women really need to think out, especially with you, um, Vernicia. Vernicia has, I think, what, three or four kids? I think she's got three kids. She told us the last time. Maybe some of those children are still at the home with her. We know kids don't leave the house no more at 18. Sometimes these children are with us until they are 25 years old because they can't afford to live out on their own because rent is high. It's a lot of money to get uh, on your own home. So sometimes we are in multi-generational homes. You got grandmothers, mothers, and daughters living at home. You got your kids living with you. Let's say Vernicia got with a Jabari. Let's say they got together. Um, could, you, could Vernicia move with Jabari? What would she do with her house? What if her kids can't afford their own apartments? So Vernicia really can't get rid of her house because her kids need a place to stay. What would she do? Tell her kids, hey, I'm going to go live with Jabari. Y'all can't come. Y'all got to get your own place. She can't bring them with Jabari because what? Now Jabari says, well, shoot, I got a three-bedroom house, one for me. I already got a kid. We can't fit all our kids up underneath this house. 
How does your union even come together? And how does that look when you then also say you want the man to be able to pay for all what he's got going on, but everything you got going on as well? I really think both men and women really need to start thinking about this money because I think a lot of us are living in the past when it comes to finances and relationships. I really, really do. Women are making more and more and more and more money. I could tell you what, if I were at, at a work, at a job, and some man said to me, we do the same exact job, but I'm going to need to make 50% more than you because I got a woman at home that expects me to earn more money than her. I would say, what? So you got to make more than me because you got a woman at home that you have to make more than, but we do the same job. How can we as women be in these positions, these jobs that pay good money, but then expect men to make not only the same as us, but twice as us. If that man is making twice as much, he must be, it must be some income and in inequity on that job. If there must be some income inequity on that job because how can he be making twice as much as a woman and women are doing the same job he's doing? Women not even thinking about this. You're asking for raises on your job. You're asking to make more money. You're becoming more industrious, but yet we're still expecting men to make twice as much of us, 40% more than us. How can we be rising in income? And I don't even know why a woman would say that. I would more be around, you want a man to make a certain amount of money. There is, a, there is an amount of money out here where you need to make in order to live a decent lifestyle. But I wouldn't put a cap on, he's got to make necessarily more than you because that puts a cap on you, ladies. That limits your success, okay? What happens when you hit it big? What happens when you get a big promotion? What happens in your entrepreneurial business you get some good clients or you do something. Now all of a sudden your income has doubled in a year because that's what everybody's praying for out here. You praying for, uh, you know, plentifulness, bounty, bountiness, bountifulness. You're praying for these kind of things. What if it strikes? What if God blesses you with double? Are you going to drop the man, the boyfriend, the husband? No. Why, why, why shouldn't you just want to make as much as you can, but also require that the man makes a certain amount? Yeah, you don't want to sort of be taking care of him. But if he can make a certain amount that pays for certain things, maybe that is Oprah Winfrey. Lots of women who are making lots of money don't have the requirement that the man make more because they themselves make so much money. Women need to rethink what they're asking for because I think when it comes off on dates, it's coming off wrong. I think Vernicia even comes off wrong. When v Vernicia says, I want a man who makes a lot of money, I don't believe Vernicia's rolling like that, y'all. I don't. I don't, but I don't believe Vernicia, a hairstylist, everyday hairstylist, she ain't no celebrity hairstylist in Houston, Texas, with three kids in the house, is making so much money. I don't, I don't. And I think when you talk like that, you shoo a lot of men away because they're thinking, oh, she's an entrepreneur. There's no cap in her money. There's a cap. There is a cap. There is absolutely a cap. I think we need to change our speech out here, women and men. I'm glad to see that Jabari is adjusting his dating style. I'm glad his friends told him, man, you might be dating the wrong type of women. You might need to date another type of woman. And I think the same thing with women. Y'all need to calibrate, recalibrate, recalibrate. Because the world is changing. And if women's salaries are constantly rising and women are constantly closing the wage gap with men, I don't know how we can still be talking about we don't want a man who makes the same amount of, as us or somewhere nearby that we want a man who makes so much more than us that not only can he afford his lifestyle, he can also afford your elevated lifestyle because none of these women are talking about they want to live a modest lifestyle. They're talking about they like nice things. They like nice trips. They like nice cars, which means they're not trying to live down here in lower middle class. They're trying to live up here. So I don't know how those two things fit. The world has changed. The world has changed. Out here in California, we're paying 
$5.55 for a gallon of gas. A gallon of gas. How, home prices are through the roof. People up here with $6,000, $7,000, $8,000 mortgages. Kids got private schools. How can you expect a man to be paying all this by himself and all you have to contribute is 20%. 20%, but you still want a lifestyle. You, these expectations are out of date. They're out of touch. We often talk about out of touch people. It's out of touch if you're living in a high um, an area where it's costly to live in, these big cities like New York, California, Miami. It's out of touch, ladies. You out of touch. You're out of touch. If you want that lifestyle, you need to go and move to a lower cost of living state, a city, Jackson, Mississippi, something. Go down there with Bell Collective. Go down there with the Bell Collective people. People need to recalibrate. Recalibrate because I think we got some misses out here in the dating world. We got some people are missing each other. There's, a, there's somebody out there for you, but y'all are missing each other because you got so many boundaries around you, so many rules around you that what's happening is you're not connecting. Jabari's not connecting with the woman he needs to connect with. Verdisha's not connecting with the man she needs to connect with because our conversation, our speech is making us miss each other. We need more connections out here. We need more families out here. We need more people working together out here. All this doing everything by yourself, all alone, paying all your bills by yourself, hustling in the world by yourself. That's why we got the housing shortage as it is, because everybody's living by themselves and no people are joining together and partnering together. And now we got a housing crisis because we was never made for everybody to live in their own little houses. It's not enough land for everybody to be living in their own individual houses. We're supposed to be getting along together. We're supposed to be with people. We're supposed to be in community. We're supposed to be in partnerships. But we're dividing out here. We're dividing out here and we're going solo too much. Too much soloness. Too much soloness. I really want to see. That's why I like these dating shows because I want to see more couples. I want to see more togetherness. I want to see more partnerships. But it's being prevented by all these rules and boxes and everything. Anyway, let me get, let me get off my soapbox. Anyway, that's it, y'all. I will see you uh, tomorrow for Married at First Sight. Talk to you later. Bye. I worked hard to get yeah. here, so. So your life, so your lifestyle could maintain it would just be me adding to it. I, I would hope so. Yeah, okay. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could do that. I could do that. <laughs>